And every lunch hour we got off. I know where this is going. Yeah, every lunch hour we got <laughs> off and uh, we had days of our lives on. Yes. And we were watching you play Eugene Bradford. Now, this character was a bit nuts. Um, everybody around him was dying. There were time machines, bombs, uh, you know, holographic prisms, ghosts, and you dressed in drag. I mean, it was, it was uh, just another day in the days of our lives, so to speak, right? So tell us about that character and, and, and how, how you enjoyed playing that one. Um, I, I was... Uh, I, I was under contract for Universal for a couple of years. And there was a woman there who, um, uh, when the contract program broke apart, she went and became a producer at Days of Our Lives. Uh, she offered me the job of this uh, psychopath. <laughs> That's what, you know, John, you know, oh, I know who would play a psychopath really well, John Delancey, I'll, br I'll bring him in. and. Um, so, you know, as an actor, it's really flattering to be offered anything. Um, and I had never watched a soap opera. Believe me, at Juilliard, that's not what they thought that they were training us for. So, um, so in any case, I looked at the show uh, before going on the show, and I, I looked at it, you know, as an actor. And this is something that which I think is, is helpful for, um, frankly, for everybody. There is what is wanted and then there is what is needed. So um, I looked at the show, and I understand that what they wanted was a psychopath, but what they needed was a comedian. The show needed a comedian, somebody that, you know, it was so turgid, and it's just like, oh my God, and everybody's all so serious about everything. So, um, so I, I think the first scene <laughs> in which I have, I'm speaking to, uh, to um, Deirdre Hall uh, through some, I, I, I'm the one at least I'm remembering, this is many years ago, is, is that um, uh, I, um, I, I'm speaking to her for, through some sort of window. I don't know, she's on one side, I'm on the other. And I get up really close, and I, I pretend as if I, I want to kiss her, and I, and I pretend as if I don't see that the window is there, and I go like that. You know, it's a little, these kind of Lotsy sort of, you know, Italian, just, you know, I'm following her in the, in the woods, and all of a sudden I, I, I'm going to go like this, and then I slip out of frame, and the next thing you see is that I'm, I'm cleaning the dog poop off of, off of because I've slipped on that thing. So I, I was very, uh, I thought, you know what, They're, they'll fire me or they won't fire me, but I see uh, the opportunity to, to, to bring some sort of comedy in this. And uh, low comedy, I might add. <laughs> and um, as I walked out at the end of the week, um, the producer ran out, and I was very, very fortunate. He was a little guy named Al Rabin uh, from Chicago, um, a, a, a Jewish cut-up. That's what he was. He was the class clown when he grew up, uh, when he was in high school. And he loved what I was doing. And he would say, and he said, we're going to have you back. And I go, well, how's it possible? I'm a, a, a psychopath, a kidnapper, a pedophile. Who knows? I'm, I'm everything that's terrible. And he goes, oh, it's a soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have you back, yeah. and uh, and so I, I ended up I ended up coming back, and I was there for three years with Arlene, who was fantastic, and he the only notes he ever gave the two of us, he simply would go faster and funnier, <laughs> and then we'd start shooting. You mentioned Deidre Hall; she's still on the show. She is all this time. Like she is forty years later. Of, I know, uh, I know. It's it's and it's okay. So really quick before we move on, yeah. is, you know, soap operas are daily. You know, I mean, like all, every weekday of the week, you know, so you're, you're cranking through this stuff rapidly and fast. Take us through just a quick, just quickly how these are produced. And, and Well, they're not produced like this anymore. And they asked me to come back a couple of years ago, and I said, no. I, I, I mean, first of all, I don't think you can go back. It's very difficult. Of course, I say that, and, and no, we're going to talk about Picard. But, but um, uh, you have to be really, really careful about not trying to recreate. That's a terrible trap to get in to um but and in 
this is how it used to be. Um, you would arrive at six in the morning and they would have a, a dry block of the show, which you and the director, he would give you some idea of what it, he wants you to do. Then at around nine o'clock, there would be a, 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 to about noon, there would be a camera block. So the, the cameras would come in and, and then you'd do it all over again. Then there would be lunch, uh, makeup, hair, what have you. And then at, uh, let's say one o'clock, they would start filming and that could go from one until about five or six or even seven. None of that exists anymore. Um, uh, now it's mostly talking heads and, um, and it's just reams of dialogue. 